Hello and welcome. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm featuring the May of 2023 Crafty Courtyard Kit by Pink and Main called Pretty Posies. I recently shared an unboxing video that shows an up close look of all of the contents of this beautiful kit. So if you missed that video, I will link that above and in the description box below. But here's a brief look at what's included. The Crafty Courtyard Kits are one of the monthly subscription products available from Pink and Main. You can sign up to receive the kits each month. They ship around the 15th, and you can still purchase the kits through the end of the month unless it sells out. Your subscription will change to the next month's box on the 1st. If you'd like to purchase, I will have links to everything down in the description box. These are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. This helps to support my channel. Now, before we get started, I hope you'll take a moment to click on that subscribe button down below if you're not already a subscriber. In this video, I'll be sharing five cards I made with this kit and the first five sketches from Kendra's card challenge number 10. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, you can download the free printable that contains cutting guides for six sheets of six by six paper and 15 card sketches, showing how you can make a bunch of cards with little to no scraps. I will link a video below in the description box so you can get all of the details. For this video, I thought it would be helpful to kind of explain a little bit of my thought process behind selecting the pattern papers. The last page of the printable shows a quick reference guide that indicates which papers you will use on each card sketch, so you will know which patterns will need to coordinate and go together. So I've taken all of the different patterns in this paper pad and laid them out so I can decide what I want to do. There are six different colors of this grid line pattern here, and also the checkered pattern. On the other side of the checkered patterns, there's several patterns that have all six colors, like the chevron and the big dots, and then the two plaid patterns. But I typically pick a few patterns that have all of the colors in them to help tie in some of the solid color patterns together. You can see that there are six colors also of this polka dot pattern. So usually I will try to pick all six colors of the same pattern so that no matter what paper I assign to it, I know that at least the patterns will coordinate on that one side. Now for this kit, I decided to go with the checkered patterns and then I can use the other side if I need to. Some of my cards will only have one color and some will have multiple colors. In my challenge introduction video, I show and explain how to cut the six sheets of pattern paper using the cutting guides. So I won't show the process of cutting papers A, B, and C in this video, but I do want to share some tips for cutting papers D, E, and F. So um, you want to pay attention to the numbers on each piece on the cutting guides to know which sketch that it belongs with, and you'll want to sort the pieces by sketch number as you cut each page. I like to use cellophane bags or storage sleeves to keep myself organized. So here are the cutting guides for papers D, E, and F. And as you can see, they are pretty much all the same with the exception of piece 15 on paper F. So my tip for cutting these three papers is to do them all at the same time. The scissors on the cutting guides indicate the first cut, so I'm going to cut all three of these stacked papers at four inches first. And I'm taking the far right piece and cutting it at five and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the larger left pieces, making sure that I keep these lined up really good. Now I'm going to make pencil marks to cut my diagonal lines. You can use either the ruler on your paper trimmer or a ruler, um, but you'll want to mark at one and a quarter inches on the left side. And then on the right hand side, you'll measure down from the top two inches and mark that. Here I'm switching to my T ruler because it's easier. <laughs> but um, then you're going to measure down from that mark one and a quarter inches. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. And all of this is laid out in that printable. But you should end up with two dots on each side. And then you'll want to line up the two dots at the top in your paper trimmer and you'll cut all three sheets at the same time. And then of course you'll make your second diagonal cut by doing the same thing, lining up the other two dots. Now let's cut the diagonal pieces for papers D and E that go with sketch number 13. 
So don't forget to remove paper F because you don't want to cut that bottom rectangle piece. For this, you'll want to measure down from the top two and five eighths of an inch on the right side and make a mark. And then you'll line up the top left corner with that mark on the right in your paper trimmer to make that first diagonal cut. And then you'll turn it slightly and you'll line up that pencil mark in the bottom left corner and then you'll cut. So doing it this way is so much faster and it also makes sure that your pieces will line up when you go to put your cards together. So here's what papers D, E, and F should look like when they're cut. And after sorting each piece into the bags for the 15 different sketches, you'll want to decide which side of the pattern papers you want to use and cut your layers. And you can do that with matching colored cardstock or other additional pattern paper. But instead of doing all this ahead of time like I usually do for my videos, I'm taking this one one card at a time. So here is sketch number one. It's got this one big rectangle pattern paper piece here in the middle. I really love this red checkered pattern and I'm cutting the matching red cardstock for my bottom layer and I plan to use white for my card base and for the mat around the checkered piece. I'm also cutting a white strip for the sentiment and a slightly larger red layer. Now, If you happen to have a dull blade on your paper trimmer like I have here and it your paper's fraying a little bit, you can always take a sand eraser along the edges to help get rid of those frayed edges. Now for the front of the card, I'm using the word and shadow die that comes in the kit that says sweet friend. And I cut the word out of the bottom red layer of cardstock since it will be hidden behind the rectangle. And the shadow, I cut that out of white. And then I cut the banner ends so that I would know how much room I have for my sentiment. And I've placed some white ice rink cardstock into my Misty stamping platform. And for card one, I'm stamping the sentiment and butterflies in the asphalt ink, which is black. And before gluing everything down for card number one, I decided to go ahead and stamp a bunch of images from the Pretty Posy stamp set while I had this out. And so I just ended up laying out all of the floral images on my Misty onto the white ice rink cardstock making sure to leave enough space between the flowers so that I'd have room to place all of my dies to cut these all out at once. I also lined up the sentiment stamps at the bottom so that I could either cut them in strips or use a punch to cut them out. I stamped everything in the black asphalt ink from Pink and Main and I stamped four additional sheets of the same images off camera since I already had everything laid out on my Misty. Next, I added the solid stamps on top of the flowers and the pot and the butterflies to give them some color. Now remember, these solid stamps don't line up exactly with these flowers. They are meant to be slightly offset to give it an abstract look. And um, for these, for the colors, I'm going to be bringing in the dress shop, which is a pretty pink, the night sky, which is a purple, and also construction, which is an orange color since they match the colors in the kit. Now, if you purchase the bundle of inks from Pink and Main, it comes with Velcro stickers and a handle, which is super handy if you're anything like me and tend to get ink on your fingers when stamping. But I went ahead and added color to each of the four sheets of stamped images so that I would have plenty to work with in different colors. Next, I cut out all of the images using the coordinating dies that came in the kit. Another tip for cutting out multiple sheets is that once you have all of the dies, tape down on your first sheet, use it as a template. You'll just line up the images from the next sheet behind it and run it through your die cutting machine and it will cut them all out and you don't have to keep taping them to each sheet since they were all stamped in the same place. So now I have plenty of images to decorate the rest of my cards. So back to card number one. I originally thought I'd have room to put a flower on this card too. But with that large word die, I just couldn't make it fit. I didn't want it to be too crowded. I added some foam tape to the back of the sentiment and word die cut to give them some dimension. And then for the butterflies, I wanted to color them red, but instead of using a Copic marker, I opted to go with some pops of color so that they would be shiny and a bit raised. Now 
For card number two, I have a top folding white card base ready to go. I'm using the plaid side of the pattern paper and gluing it onto a piece of the construction cardstock. Since the bottom layer calls for an embossed or stenciled panel according to the sketch, I'm using the stencil from the kit directly on the white card base. I tape the stencil down to my work surface using some low tack tape, but at the time I didn't think to check which side of the stencil would be right side up. You'll see what I mean here in just a minute. But I'm using construction ink and the Pink and Main Mini Ergonomic Blending Brush to add ink through the stencil. And then when I went to stamp the flower images on top is when I discovered that I had the stencil upside down. I guess I could have still used it without stamping the flowers on top, but that wasn't really the look I was envisioning for this card, so I decided to start over. And since my mini blending brush, I just cleaned it and it was still wet, I decided to try a paper pouncer this time. And instead of brushing or wiping, this is a sponge applicator that you just pounce the ink on top. It is faster, but I have to say I like the results of the brush better. It has a little bit more detail. So now that I have the stenciled flowers facing the right way, I'm taking each of the flowers in the stamp set and I've placed them on an acrylic block and I'm stamping each of them on top using the purple night sky ink. For the oval piece, I'm using these stitched oval dies, cutting the smaller oval out of white cardstock and the larger out of the construction color and I will layer these up. I glued down the pattern paper strip at a diagonal, making sure to stay away from the ends with the glue since I will be trimming those off. I decided to use a white flower in the pot for the focal point and rather than adding dimension to the die cuts I decided to add some foam tape to the back of the oval instead. And for the sentiment I used a banner punch to cut out just a note and I glued that on the bottom right corner. And then to embellish the card, I added a few glitter enamel dots on one of the flowers and next to the sentiment. And then I also used the sequin mix and placed a few pieces around the flower to help fill in some of that white space. And this finishes off card number two. For card three, I align the two smaller rectangle pieces along the top and bottom edges of this piece of construction colored cardstock. I added some 1 8 of an inch strips of night sky cardstock on both sides, and then I glued down the middle plaid piece. I added a purple flower with the sentiment thinking of you, along with a couple of butterflies, and then finished the card off with three glitter enamel dots in the top right hand corner. Now for the two fun fold cards. For card four, I decided to turn this sketch to make it a landscape gatefold card. I started with a white piece of cardstock that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. And you'll want to score it at two and three quarter inches and then flip it and score it at two and three quarter inches on the other end. And then fold the two ends together where they meet in the middle. And for the bottom layer, I'm using the night sky cardstock. And I started with a four by five and a quarter inch layer as called for on the measurements on the card sketch. And then I cut it in half at two and five eighths of an inch. And I cut a piece of construction cardstock for that middle plane piece. And then I glued down the purple layer. And I decided to emboss that plain construction piece with a chevron embossing folder. I bought this from Pink and Main a while back. And then I glued the pieces down exactly as shown on the sketch, leaving a space between the strips on the left side. Now for the focal point, I'm using one of the frame images that I stamped and cut out earlier. I'm using a piece of night sky cardstock to add another layer behind it to help support this piece a little more since part of it will be hanging over the edge. I played around with the placement of the flowers a little bit, but decided to go with just the one single purple flower. I kept the placement where I wanted it so I would know exactly where to stamp the sentiment on the frame. I stamped hello there to the left of the flower using the night sky ink and then I glued the frame onto the purple layer and added glue on the back side of just the left side since the frame will hang over the edge. And then I glued down the flower and the pot directly onto the frame 
and then I colored in the leaves and some of the swirly parts of the frame with a yellow Copic marker. And then I added a glitter enamel dot next to the sentiment to finish off the card. And for my last card for this video, another fun fold, this sketch calls for an embossed, stenciled, or pattern paper panel. So I decided to use another sheet of pattern paper from the paper pad, and I'm making this into a fun fold card also. I'm not really sure what you call it, but you'll see what I mean in just a minute. But I adjusted the measurements a bit for the colored cardstock behind the chevron piece. Instead of it measuring four inches wide, I kept it the width of the card base at four and a quarter inches, and I cut it at two and three quarter inches tall. I trimmed the piece of pink polka dot paper to measure four by five and a quarter inches, and this piece is going to be glued to the inside of the card. And to make sure that I'm placing this purple piece directly in the center of my card, I used a ruler to make marks so that I would know exactly where to glue it down. And after I let it dry for a bit, I placed the card base in my paper trimmer, lining up the edge of the purple piece in my cut line. And I cut all along the edge up until the point of the middle score line where the card base folds together. I didn't quite cut far enough in, so I'm using my blade pen to try to get the corner to detach. And then I did the same thing on the other side. There were a few frayed pieces hanging on the right side, so I placed it on a cutting mat and I continued to, to use my blade pen just to help get rid of those pieces. So this card now only has that purple flap that opens up. And so this is how it will be glued down. But before doing so, I took my scoring tool to help flatten out some of those edges. And I let the uh, pieces completely dry once I added the glue. For the scalloped circle piece, I'm using the new standalone die set called Layered Scallops Circle Dies. You could use the rectangle stamped frame that comes in the kit instead, but I just got this new die set from Pink and Main and I wanted to give it a try. So I cut out yellow and purple scallops using the smaller of the two dies. On the yellow piece, I stamped just a note in the middle on the left side and I layered the purple scallop on the back. And since the pink polka dot piece is now on the inside of the card, I cut a strip of white cardstock measuring two and three quarter by four inches for a place to write the message. And then I added glue to the bottom half of the scallop and attached it to the top of the flap. And while letting that dry with my Misty sitting on top of it to help hold it down, I colored the leaves of the daisy with a yellow Copic marker and I glued the pieces down and added a large purple glitter enamel dot. And this finishes off card number five. Here's a look at all five cards again. I just love the colors in this kit and the beautiful flowers. From the pictures, the cards may look just like the sketches, but I think having the two fun folds adds a little bit of extra fun and makes these unique. I hope you'll give this a try. There's a few other sketches in Challenge 10 that can also be made into fun folds. So I'd love to know which card out of these five is your favorite. Let me know down in the comments below. Remember, you will need to sign up for the monthly subscription boxes by the 14th to guarantee that you'll get a box. And if they have any left over, you can continue ordering through the end of the month until they sell out and they start shipping on the 15th. I'd also like to invite you to join my quarterly card making challenge number 10. It's a lot of fun and you'll have a chance to win some amazing prizes, including a prize pack from Pink and Main. The challenge 10 ends on June 30th of 2023, so you still have time to create your cards. Again, for more information, click on the link down below in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.